Have you ever tried to assemble one of these Carrera pit lane garages and had all the trouble in the world? Well, I'm about to show you how to put one of these together with ease. Start, Start your, your engines. engines. Pit Lane Garage. It's a seemingly easy build, not a lot to it really, but judging by the number of frustrated comments left on places such as Amazon, there's a lot of people out there having trouble with this thing. So we're going to put one together right now in real time. Now first, have a look at the instructions and familiarise yourself with all the components. Now the good news is there's really not that many components compared to a regular scale model kit. So it's really something that anyone could put together, and yet so many people have trouble with this thing. The components come typically wrapped in this plastic, so let's undo that, and then lay them all out in front of us so that we can check that everything is here. Now this little packet of lugs is used to connect the optional VIP floor. We don't have one of those yet, so let's just put those aside for later. Now this is the middle section, this is for the signage on top. These two are the end sections, one for the left, one for the right. Next you should find the base in there, usually a dark grey colour. And then you should find four individual flexible garage doors and one last section which is the roof. Like I said, there really isn't that much to it. Now with the components all present and accounted for, let's begin. Start with your base component and take note of these two widths. The wider goes to the front. Now take your left side end piece and be sure that the angled or splayed end also goes towards the front. Line up the three lugs and gently press them in for a snug fit. Now take what you've got so far and flip it on its end. Next we're going to install two of the garage doors, making sure this rather toyish looking garage door handle is oriented towards the outside. Bend it slightly and fit it into the groove as such. Perfect. Now take the other garage door and make sure that rather toyish door handle faces out the opposite way. Carefully install it in the secondary track and there you go. We're almost halfway done. Now let's grab that middle section and make sure the splayed end is facing out towards the front of the unit as such. Now this is the moment where things go horribly wrong for some people and after another hour of frustration they give up. Let's try that again and this time we'll time ourselves. We start with the base, we add the left hand side, push those three lugs in gently until it's a nice firm fit, flip it on its end. And now here is that seemingly elusive magical trick that'll make this thing go together so easy. It's all to do with the doors. Fold them. That's it. Fold the door flat. But as a precaution, be sure to perform this action only once on each of the doors. We don't want that plastic snapping in two. And as you can see, the folded door sits in there nicely without wanting to spring out with the first little nudge. Do the same with the second door, again creating a right angle that stays put. Install that second door into its individual groove, and that brings us back to the point where everything went haywire. Not this time. Take your midsection, line up the lugs, and gently press them in. Now as you'll see, those doors are behaving themselves this time. They're fitting into their individual grooves with ease, and there you go, we're halfway done. And since we're on such a roll, haha, let's take another rather toyish looking roller door, fold it down flat, and create that glorious sanity saving right angle. Install door number three with the handle facing outside, and as you'll see, it sits there perfectly. Let's do the same with door number four. Fold it, flatten it, and create a magical right angle. Now try not to get too excited as you fit door number four, because we're now up to the final wall section. Once again, the splayed end fits towards the front of the unit. Line up the lugs into the holes, press them all the way in, and then it should line up with those ends of the doors. Now if not, such as in this case, just jiggle them about until they fit into their own individual grooves. 
Now at this point, a little extra jiggling and fiddling may be required to get them to fit correctly. But thanks to our folding technique, those doors will stay put. They won't be springing out on you unexpectedly. Uh, like that one just did. Oops. Now where did that go? Come here, you. Get back in there. Even after landing on the floor, you'll notice it's still maintaining its right angle. Ah, there's the issue. That rear door isn't sitting in its proper groove. But now it is. Okay, let's have another go with that fourth door. Got the bottom edge into the groove. Getting that top one in. There it is. And it is done. All the doors are in. All the sides are in correctly. Everything's pressed tightly together. It all fits. But we're forgetting something, aren't we? The roof. Now to put this on, fit the wider overhang, not that one, but that one. That side goes towards the front. Now carefully line up all the lugs. They can only go in one way, so you can't get this wrong. Once they're all lined up, start pressing down gently until the unit comes together. A little gentle persuasion may be required, but not a lot. There we go, all done. Look at that. I was actually a little worried there at the end, but we got there. Now, this is important. Gently press down on the top of the unit while using your thumbs to adjust those garage doors. Push them up, pull them down. It's important to loosen up those folds we created. Make sure the doors are left to sit in a different position than when they were installed. This will prevent them from being seemingly impossible to adjust later on. All good. Now for the signage. Let's put our unit aside for the moment. Fetch those banners. Make sure you've got the flat side facing upwards. Grab a hold of one of those sheets of stickers and choose the larger size. Now carefully line up the corners so that they're perfectly flush. And once they're ready to go, apply your sticker, forcing out any air bubbles by working your way from the centre outwards. Done. Now let's apply the other sticker. Once again, choosing the larger size. Now check those corners, make sure they line up flush, and apply your sticker. Once again, take care to get rid of any air bubbles by working your way from the centre outwards. And there you go. Flip them over and we'll do the smaller ones. Now make sure you put these stickers with their matching pairs, but really you could mix and match them, do whatever you like. Now these are a fairly snug fit, so make sure you line up those corners neatly before you start pressing out those air bubbles. And that leaves one more, the smaller of the two Carrera labels. And I don't know about you, but when I get near the end of a project, I start fiddling and fidgeting. Oh. Yeah, what he said. Come on now, let's concentrate and get this thing done. Here's our final sticker. We're pushing out the bubbles and now they're ready to install, which are easy as. I prefer to orient them so that the flat side is facing towards the front, but really, you can put these on any way you like. I put the Carrera ones to the back, the product to the front, and there you go. That's it. Now give yourself a pat on the back, because apparently you've just assembled something that's virtually near impossible to put together. You've done well. And since you had no issues with the stickers, you've got a full spare sheet of them to use elsewhere on your layout. And as an option, you've got these side door stickers. Now I personally don't really like them. They're a bit, well, you know, toyish. But if you feel you really must, there's plenty there for both ends of your garage. Keep in mind that if you've got multiple garages butted up together, you won't be seeing those doors, so save them for the very ends. Well, that's it. That's our completed garage, and it only took around six minutes to put together. Funny how one simple little trick can make all the difference. You're welcome. Now let's put those stickers away carefully for future projects, and take the time to admire our handiwork. Not bad at all. Well done, crafty ones. Now take a great big breath, cause you got five more just like that one to put together. Hello? Yeah, no pit lane is complete without the Carrera pit babes. Huh, we got mail. 
Ooh, show us your package. Wow! Don't we just love getting those packages in the mail? This one's all the way from the UK, from Green Hills Garages, Parts and Scenics. I saw these on eBay and thought, hmm, yeah, they'd look pretty good on the pit lane. And no, it's not more pit babes, but I like the way you think. Speaking of eBay, I'm rather surprised by the number of slot car related goodies you'll find on there, and at pretty good prices too. I've also found some bargains on AliExpress and Catch.com. Okay, that's not exactly what I was expecting. I thought these things would be readily made, but it looks like they're in kit form. But that's okay. We're in a crafty kind of mood. They shouldn't be too difficult to put together. They look pretty good. I just assumed they'd be one piece. But not to worry. Let's have a sit down next to the track and put these things together. Two little 132 scale tyre racks coming up. But which one will we do first? The yellow one or the blue one? I guess we'll just do both and be done with it, eh? There's a simple little instruction sheet. There's another sheet of stickers, different brand tyres. And it looks like there's just five pieces to assemble. I assume it's the same with the blue one. Yep, another instruction sheet. Bunch of pieces and more stickers. The instructions suggest using super glue or similar. And before you all start freaking out, don't worry, I'm not going to spill super glue all over the track. I just assembled my sixth Carrera garage, so I guess that makes me a professional. So there. Hmm. Okay, I've got the little shells on the yellow one in place. While they're dry, I'll work on the blue one. Another carefully and delicately placed dab of super glue. And like a true professional, I put it into place with just one hand, gripping stuff. Now for that smaller upper shelf, a little more super glue. Dab, 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 dab. And now put that away and the shelf into place. Now with the other ends glued on and drying, that leaves these little panels to mount the logos on. Uh, I wonder what we'll go with. Maybe Goodyear on the blue one and Dunlop on the yellow one. Sounds like a plan. Could always change them later if need be. Pretty straightforward to put the stickers on, there's plenty of room. Just make sure you get those bubbles out so they stay put. And there they are, two neat little tyre racks for the pit lane. Fantastic. Or so I thought. There's a bit of a problem. Yeah, um, are you sure these are 132 scale? Oh well, guess it's only top shelf tyres for this pit crew, eh? Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, I wonder who's at the door. <gasps> Another delivery. Ooh, show us your package. Wow! Okay, this one is from those wonderful folk at showusyourslots.com. And you know, this is about the third time they've come through for me, so I'm impressed. I certainly know how to package this stuff too. I wonder what it could be. It's like playing bloody past the parcel. But hey, I'm not complaining. Oh yeah, you know what it is. But I bet you can't guess which one. While you try, I'm just gonna make you sit there and watch this rather painful process unfold. See what I did there? Okay, we're at the business end. The big reveal is imminent. What could it be? Oh yes, oh wow. It's another magnificent BMW M4 DTM car. Why just have one when you can have two? And best of all, this one's red-ish. Let's take a closer look. Now, it's not exactly the latest release, but I'm sure you'll agree. That is magnificent. Just look at that livery, a real work of art. 
It's the perfect running mate for my other BMW M4. And with the Quick Slicks tyres and Slot Invasion USA performance guide I have put aside for it, it'll be a real contender. Let's check them out. First item on the great scenic construction caper is a brand new pit lane barrier. I used to just use a standard piece of Carrera guardrail, but every time the BMW M4 GT3 thundered by, it would pop out of the groove. So after first consulting with the grand Jedi master of slot car scenics, Boone's Slot Car Garage, I've decided to make my own out of balsa wood. Now as Boone suggested, I've gone ahead and scribed these markings into the balsa wood. I've done it about every 16 centimetres or so. The idea is that after it's been painted, it should resemble a bunch of concrete barriers pressed firmly together to form one great big super barrier. I'm going to glue a little stack of three tyres to each end and these will help support the unit. One thing's for sure, it's going to need all the help it can get. I used the height of the three tyres to set the height of the actual barrier, which when you place cars down in front of it, it looks about right. For paint, I'm just using some leftover Dulux weather shield from our actual home. I used these on my little Marshall towers a few weeks ago and it worked a treat. It seems to dry gluggy and lumpy and it just seemed to have more of a, a natural, authentic look about it. For the tyres, I'm just using some standard craft glue to glue them together. Nothing too permanent. Besides, I could always redo them with super glue if they need it. It's just that the craft glue allows you a little more time to get things into position before it dries. Did I say this thing is long? I was not kidding. Next, I'm adding a whole bunch of motor racing specific logos. I've just printed them out in standard definition and cut them out with a craft knife. Then a little PVA wood glue is all it takes to fix these guys into place. And here it is, the Great Pit Lane Barrier. It's pretty good, but I still think it needs something else. Maybe a little roughing up, maybe some weathering effects, maybe a totally different paint scheme, I don't know. But for now, I think it'll do nicely. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you can. And hey, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. It'll really help the channel. Speaking of the Flag Marshal Tower, since making that video, I've gone ahead and finished all four. Each one is unique and subtly different to the others. And yet they look like they might have been constructed by the same person, which they were. I've added these little craft tyres to the bases, which have really set them off. Again, each one's subtly different to the other. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next time on Slot Car Adventures. <laughs>